Okay, so I'm going to talk about how you can use our product uh, in it in combination with a bunch of other products in order to help your users discover your content. So as librarians, you are spending a lot of money buying subscriptions to content. Um, but the question is, do your patrons know what content you've got and can they get to it? How do they get to it? Um, so first of all, I'm going to talk about our product. So this is Open Athens. So basically, it's a username password system. Uh, and the idea is that, that we have librarian oriented tools for you to create usernames and passwords for each of your patrons. Now, if your organization already has a, an active directory or some sort of in-house directory or with its own usernames and passwords or a portal with authentication on it, we can integrate with that. Um, but mostly, most librarians or most one-woman libraries, um, they use our managed directory product and they um, create usernames themselves. So Athens is recognized by all the major publishers. If you walk around the, the hall here, the Wileys, the Science Directs, EBSCOs, they all understand Athens and they'll allow you, your users to access their products with Athens. So, and our tools are designed for librarians. It's not, you don't need the IT department to be involved in this. Uh, one of the big selling points is that the IT department isn't involved. <laughs> and so, so this will actually give remote access. Because it's usernames and passwords, that gives you remote access for your patrons. When they're off-site, they can access your collection. Um, another thing about Athens is that it's IP independent. Because it's username password based, we can you can define subscribers. So if you're a, a large hospital group with a shared IP address, you can define different hospitals to have their own subscriptions and be recognised by the publishers, completely independent of IP address. Um, and because it's got individual usernames and passwords, these can be categorised. So you can have physicians, residents, interns, or you can have courses for this or that and you can run statistics against those different categories of users. So unlike IP authentication, you can actually have some idea of who's using your, your resources. Not just that your resources are being used, but that you know which category of people are using them. Uh, and so libraries purchase Athens because they've got no IT support. Um, sometimes there is none. Uh, sometimes the library doesn't have a website at all, or a website that's available outside. So Athens can be run entirely by the library. Um, we also, it also gives you remote access. If your IT department won't give you um, an easy proxy server, won't issue VPN uh, accounts to people, or where remote access is usually based on easy proxy, but that means that people have to come into your site, into your infrastructure, and then go out again. So um, in some cases, particularly with the electronic patient record, you find that, that the IT department doesn't want people from outside actually coming into your network and going out again. So with Athens, your users never touch your network. Um, so where the IP topology isn't the same as your subscriber base. So we're seeing a number of like corporates, they're using uh, companies with dynamic IP addresses. They don't have a fixed IP address, so they can't, their users can't be recognized by IP. And uh, large military organizations that, um, are moving to a single IP address for the whole of their organization. So you can no longer differentiate sub-organizations or people with their own subscriptions. And what that means is, from the publisher point of view, is that you, if you're purchasing access for uh, some, some part of your organization, the publisher says, well, I can't tell. If you're using IP, I can't tell which part of your organization you are. So you have to purchase at, at the resource. You have to subscribe to the entire IP address range, which can be expensive. Um, and our corporate customers, they're actually using Athens for the statistics. They actually want to, they're paying a fortune. The corporates are paying even more than you guys are paying. And they, they want to cross-charge the costs of their resources across the different divisions. So Athens is going to give them, um, tell them which division, which part of their organization is doing the um, usage. And so they can cross-charge. Okay, now, I was going to do a live demo, but I'm very scared of live demos, especially. <laughs> so I've got some screenshots here. So part of Athens comes with a portal. And this is available on the internet. 
you can send your users to this portal and they can log in with um, a, an account that you've issued for them. Uh, and then the main thing they'll get in this portal is actually the bit in the circle, which is a list of all your resources. So each of your vendors, each of your publishers, um, there'll be a list of them. And this is dynamic, so you can, um, in the Athens administration tools, when you get a new subscription, you just add it in and it appears magically in this list. Um, the URLs to the resources appear in the list, so you don't have to look after the uh, the changing URLs when the publisher changes what they're doing. And then your users, so they're off-site or somewhere, they've logged into this portal and they can just click on a link. And here's, um, so I've done an example from, um, this is St. Thomas Hospital, which is one of our customers in Tennessee. Uh, they've clicked on a link to the New England Journal of Medicine from this portal, and here they are in the New England Journal of Medicine and recognized as St. Thomas Hospital in one click. Um, and I've clicked on another one, another uh, fairly common thing, StatRef. One click and the user's gone from the portal straight into the resource. So that's pretty good. Now, one, a simple method of actually telling your users what you've got, what resources you have, is by emailing them. Now, in Open Athens, because you've created usernames, passwords for them, whether you've created them using that, um, individually or from a spreadsheet, or you've, create, you've got a self-registration form, you've got users who are, have selected themselves to be interested in your resources. So you, and you can use the Athens tools to generate a list of email addresses. And then you can send them information that says, we've now subscribed to something, JAMA. Uh, here's all the details. Or we've got um, somebody coming from up to date to run us a training session. You can come and see this. So you can actually proactively tell your users you've got these things. But what I'm talking about here is resources, talking about uh, the vendors, things at vendor level, but do your patrons know what vendors, you know, they're interested in a journal, they're interested in information, would they know where to go, would they know which resource to go to? Um, in some cases they know where to find a particular journal. Um, so. We're now talking about drilling down into your content to direct your users to uh, the journals. And here's an example using our MyAthens portal, how you can create a handcrafted list of your journals. Now this, this customer's only got uh, about 50 journals, so that's possibly manageable. But um, if you've got more than 100, you probably wouldn't want to be creating this sort of stuff by hand. So you'd want to be looking at some sort of product, like uh, this is uh, EBSCO's A to Z product. So EBSCO will help you tailor this and provide links to all your, uh, all your journals. So your patrons can come to your journal A to Z, they can search for a journal, um, either alphabetically or by searching for the name, and actually get to the journal. So, and you can see that in this display, they, a lot of our customers use Athens for off-site access, uh, but they still use IP for on-site access. So the convenience of IP where you don't have to type in any usernames or passwords. Um, so in the A to Z thing, you actually need two links, because the Athens links are different. So you actually have to have one link to take your users to be IP authenticated, and another link for, for them to get to Athens. Um, but some users you know, may not be interested in particular journals, they just want to search stuff. They want, they're looking for information, but they don't know where they're going to get this stuff. Um, but they're going to go to one of the big search things, like Google Scholar or PubMed. So they're actually going to search across a whole body of information. But in order to do that, in order to direct your users to your content, you need to be using a link resolver, which is something that, that knows about your collection. So as a library, you can buy content from a number of different places. You can buy access to the same journal from a database or from an aggregator or from the publisher themselves. And so the link resolver is something where it has knowledge of your collection. It knows where different journals are sourced from by you. And then it can link the user to the appropriate copy of this material. So there's a bunch of um, products out in the, uh, the hall here that do this so um, I've listed some of them. They need to be configured for your library's collection. 
and they need to know how you're going to authenticate your users, how your users are going to get to your content. Um, but here's, here's an example from um, an Australian um, customer, Ballarat Health Sy Services Library. Now they're using, they're using EBSCO's link source resolver um, and they've got it set up in PubMed. They've had PubMed, they're using PubMed link out um, to, to store their collection and they've hooked in the link resolver to point to their collection. And so in this example here, the user's done a, done a search, well, sorry, the user's gone to the link out URL for PubMed. The user's gone, known that they're from Ballarat. They've gone to the special URL and they've done a search. And in this search, they've actually, you can filter the results. You see on the right hand side by, you can say, I'm from, I'm Ballarat, show me the Ballarat things. And then um, when you, you click on that, you actually get uh, the details of this article. And also you'll find this, find it, an icon at the side that says find it uh, for Ballarat. So, and then when the user clicks on that link, the link resolver then comes in and actually offers the user a choice. I mean, in, in this case, the, the library subscribes to, multi, to this article from multiple places. And the link source resolver is offering two options. It's offering them on-site links or off-site links. And so for the purposes of my Open Athens demonstration, I'm clicking on the, uh, the off-site Athens ones, and single click, and there I am. I mean, this, this um, article is delivered through Synal for this, this customer. And here's the CINAHL information about it, with a link to the full text. And then the user can click on the full text and get the PDF straight away. So PubMed, there's the user in PubMed. They need to know that they're using your link out URL, but then they can actually get directed to your content. So similarly, in, uh, this is an example of Google Scholar. Um, so this is a different customer, this is Washington, MedStar Washington uh, Hospital Center. Um, so the, the user, again the user has to select at the beginning where they're from. So the, this is the Google settings page, this is the library links page where the user chooses their library. So in this case it's Washington Hospital Center. Okay, and then the user can then go and do a, a search for... Um, oh, you don't want to know that um, Ian Connor's online. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, so the user's done the search and got all sets of results. Um, <clears throat> but you can see that some of these results have actually got an icon on the side. And th this time it's actually saying full text at WH Center. So again, the, the link resolver is hooked into Google Scholar, knows about your collection, and knows that you can link to this particular article. So I've clicked on this article, uh, and in this case, um, the, this is the TDNet link resolver, uh, which has come and is offering to, <coughs> to deliver it from Ovid. Now, the TDNet link resolver is more sophisticated than the link source one in terms of Athens. It's not asking the user to, to identify whether they're on-site or off-site. The TDNet one knows whether you're on-site or off-site, and we'll actually offer you the link for Athens if you're off-site and the link for IP authentication if you're on-site. So the TDNet thing has got one link and then you hit the link and bang, here you are at the uh, article. So, so again, like with PubMed, the user has to start by, by identifying his library and you've had to build the link resolver which knows your collection but then the, the tools in PubMed and Google Scholar will actually direct the user to the um, appropriate article. Uh, now, uh, another flavor on top of this is that um, the link resolver things know about this, the content you subscribe to, but sometimes, uh, particularly in the corporate world, they have a document delivery service. So um, the link resolver will take you to the, the copy of the article if you subscribe copy of the article if you have it, but will actually link to your document delivery service if you have one. Now document delivery can be expensive um, and corporates are possibly the place where they, um, they allow their researchers to, uh, to request an article from a document delivery service. But Quosa is an interesting thing where it intercepts the document delivery request 
and actually finds out whether this organisation has already purchased a copy of that article. And if so, it's got it in its virtual library. So when, the thing, when a document delivery sends you the, the article, Quosa will store it, and then subsequent access, subsequent purchases, you don't need to purchase it, you just got it. You've already, your organisation has already bought it. So that's quite um, fascinating, moderately. And then there's the uh, discovery services. <coughs> so the PubMed and Google are actually searching across a whole body of information, some of which you may have access to and some of which you don't. Now the discovery services, they do something different. They actually have knowledge of your collection. And so in their case, the user is searching across your collection not searching across stuff that they, they may or may not be able to access. So the discovery services have, use the, the same sort of um, knowledge as the link resolver of your collection and are then run searches uh, across your collection and your users can be guaranteed that you've um, got access to this thing. So, and the link result from the search results, it's the same as Google Scholar and PubMed, but the, li the link resolver is the thing that takes the user to the right content. So they're not cheap, you know, they come at cost, but um, they're much more effective for taking your users to your content. Anyway, so there you have it. So the Open Athens will help you get your users off-site, access to your uh, content, will list your, your resources, will allow you to email the, the details to your users. You can be publicizing your resources. You can, with the journal A to Z, you've got journal level discovery, and then you've got the link resolvers hooked into the PubMed and the Google Scholar. So the concept is that, of, that you've purchased these resources, you've paid good money to have these subscriptions, you need to get more usage, you need to be getting your patrons to your content. And these are some ways you can do it. So, thank you.